In the past week, two reports have underscored just how widespread the threat of book bans has become. One by PEN America says that book bans in public schools during the most recently completed school year were up 33 percent. More than 40 percent of all book bans, according to the PEN report, occurred in Florida school districts. And that state's governor, presidential candidate Ron DeSantis, as you know, championed a law in Florida that requires approval of books in school libraries. Now, a separate report by the American Library Association says that almost half of book challenges occurring through August have occurred in public libraries. Last week, more than 175 writers and actors and entertainers and others signed a letter warning how these bans are, quote, antithetical to free speech and expression, and how they'll have a, quote, chilling effect on the broader creative field. My next guest signed that letter, Amanda Gorman. She's a poet and author who famously read one of her poems at President Biden's inauguration. She's also the author of a new children's book, Out Tomorrow, Something Someday. I want to talk to you about your new book, your children's book, but I want to talk first about um, about book banning, which you and I have talked about yes. before. Uh, Pen America, uh, the literary group which you've partnered with in the past, they say that there's a 33% increase in book bans during the last school year. You experienced this with your book, The Hill We Climb. It was restricted in a Florida school district. Mm -hmm. where, where does this where does this go? Um, I think the book bans will continue to rise unless they meet some type of impediment. As you mentioned, I think it's really important to put it in numbers as well. These are thousands of book bans. We've seen over 3,000 this year, but you also have to look at it from the point of view. Last year, 60% of those thousands were pretty much filed by 11 people. So this is an incredibly small but vocal and coordinated minority. Um, the book that was restricted, The Hill We Climb, mm -hmm. was um, was kind of an offshoot of your poem, which you yes. read at the inauguration of President Biden. I just want to play an excerpt of that, mm. because for so many people, it's the first time they, yes. they ever saw you. So let's just watch that. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. It gave so much sense of hope and sort of optimism. Do you still feel that sense of, of optimism? A hundred percent. For me, hope isn't a gift we possess. It's a gift that we practice. It's something that we have to fight for and learn and grow and lean into. So I wake up every day fighting not just for justice, but for my own hope and keeping that flame alive. Yeah. Writing a children's book, what is the process how, how do you go about it? Yeah, I'm sure you've noticed this reading children's books to your kids, but they're actually really complicated and sophisticated. They really are, <laughs> They yes. really are, and so you have to, you know, write it at a, an age that's accessible for the young reader, but also an enjoyable experience for the parent, for the family, for the guardians. And so I always try to start with the heart of the book. I was thinking, what's the experience of being a caregiver, caretaker of a young child at this time who has big questions about the world? That's the other thing about children's books, which I hadn't known much about <laughs> until I did this, is, you know, it's talking about what's on the page mm -hmm. with your child that's yeah. so interesting and the meaning of the words mm -hmm. and what they see in the images and things that they didn't see that they suddenly see. Absolutely, and I think that's why poetic thought lent itself so well to storytelling, especially with young children, because you're looking at the unit of language as the most powerful measurements of sound and literature. So for me, writing a few words on a page isn't a prison, it's a privilege. And so getting to think very finite about what's the word that's going to have the most impact on this beautiful, gorgeous soul that's reading my words, that's the fundamental question of poetry. Do the sound of the words matter to you as they, they may in poetry? Absolutely, and I think it comes from my background having a speech impediment. Being able to read poetry out loud was a huge form of my own speech therapy and pathology, and so I look at it on the page, but also how does this feel kind of moving through a young person's like body and mouth, and is this something I could imagine someone saying aloud is a huge component. Is that something you still struggle with? Because I, I, I had a, uh, a, a reading issue when I was a child, mm. a mild form of dyslexia, mm. and I went to somebody and I also sort of stuttered and still do occasionally. Mm, yeah. Is that something you struggle with? A hundred percent. I mean, it's something I think a lot of people use the word like, 
overcome the speech impediment. I'm like, no, the speech impediment is coming with me wherever I'm going, <laughs> but I'm just carrying it in a different way. And so after, you know, around 20 years of speech therapy, I can have this conversation with you. But even just now, I was saying the word like prison and saying that R was hard for me because that's what I struggle the most with. And so you push through and I focus more on the content of what I'm saying than how it sounds or it appears. And I think that's what gives me the bravery to continue what I do. What, what is the idea behind this book, so, Something mm -hmm. Someday? What did you want it, the message to be to a child? Yeah, well, you know, I was thinking because I meet with so many young children, especially in elementary school and middle school, and they are incredibly emotionally intelligent. They are, know there's disruptions and transformations happening in the world, and they really want to understand what their place is within it, even from a very young age. And I wanted to write a book that safeguarded and preserved their hope and their power and their spirit and their vibrancy. And doing that kind of in the legacy of the songs I love of just this idea of change gonna come. I don't know when it's going to happen. I can't tell you if it's tomorrow or the next day or what it's going to look like, but I know it's arriving soon, someday, because of the young people we have in the world right now. Would you read something? Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to read just a small excerpt from the middle. Okay. You make a promise to each other. You say there is a problem, but it's our problem together so we can fix it together. This problem is big, but together we are bigger. Mm. It's lovely. Thank you. Something someday. Yes. Thank you so much, Amanda Thank Gorman. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Amanda Gorman's new book, Something Someday, comes out tomorrow.